Thanks for joining us today at Hygelin Ranch in the hill country of South Central Texas. We've been hunting for turkey, deer, and feral pig. Welcome to Queens of Camo. Being a woman may be seen as a disadvantage, but I think it's an advantage. I'm very competitive when it comes to that sort of thing, and I've been told so many times that I can't do it because I'm a woman. I mean, my first bow buck was a 24 and a half inch eight pointer, and I was told, there's no way you're gonna get that, especially with a bow, and girl, you've never hunted with a bow, you can't do it, and I mean, within two weeks, I had the buck on the ground. I come from a long hunting heritage. I was born and raised here in Fredericksburg, Texas. My grandmother, we call her Oma, is the one that really first introduced me to hunting when I was about probably three or four years old. So, um, and I in turn have kept my kids hunting. My husband and I hunt all the time together. So um, this is just what we do. <laughs> everything in the hill country, the plants, the terrain, everything is beautiful. Rolling hills, live oaks, tons of cedar, tons of brush. It's a mixture of all of it. You can walk one ranch and you can have just total flats of fields and flowing grass. And then you turn around and you're looking at a big granite dome like Enchanted Rock or something around here. It's just a whole mixture of every kind of plant and wildlife that you want to see. There's deer, quail, tons of feral pigs now. There's different animals everywhere you turn around here. So it's, it's just full of all kinds of wildlife and beautiful trees, wildflowers, all kinds of stuff like that. So if you were to ask me, how do I pee in the woods, that's, <laughs> well, <laughs> very carefully away from where I am hunting, hopefully I can find a designated area, depending on who's with me, but way away from my stand, way away from my sitting area, way away from the feed area. Um, you hear mixed, mixed things about going to the restroom in the woods, but there's basically no secret or no trick. It's just away from where I'm hunting. <laughs> I said I can never have too many pockets. I think I have something in every single possible place I could have something. I got a flap. This is awesome. Oh, where did the other zipper go? And it's stuck. Uh-oh, what if that was an emergency? I'd be peeing on my bibs. You know who's really good at peeing outside is um, Candace. I don't think she's used that port porta potty like at all since she's been here. And then you just kind of squat. What is going on here? These zippers are like, is that right? Now it's stuck in my bush baby suit. I am a mess today. So once you have your flap down, um, you have to be sure, because if you squat like this, you're gonna pee all over it. And you don't wanna pee on your feet either, because then the deer are gonna smell your, your pee on your, on your boots. So yeah, it's kind of difficult really. So and sometimes I'll stuff toilet paper if my pockets are full of like important stuff. Oh. No, not a cactus. You grab the, you grab the flap, and then you gotta pull like all the rest of that business down too, you know? And then you kinda gotta hold all of it and squat. It's kinda hard. It's like when you pee in public restrooms and you don't wanna sit on the toilet seat. It's like that. And then it kinda helps if you like grab a branch and kinda lean backwards. Once you're done, you got, it's real important that you don't walk back through where you peed, because then it it's kinda of defeats the purpose of trying so hard not to pee on your boots because you don't want to track the smell back to the blind or wherever you're going. If you're stalking, you don't want to smell like your pee. When an animal first steps into my line of sight, there's a lot going through my head. I'm thinking, what is this animal? Is this an animal worthy of consideration to take? Is this a mature doe? Is this, is this a buck that reached, has reached his prime age? You have to sit there and wait for the perfect shot opportunity. You have to wait for him to quarter away slightly or you have to be within your distance you're comfortable with to shoot because not everybody's gonna be the same. So it's just kind of a combination of 
analyzing the situation, the animal, your equipment, are you ready to shoot? And then it's the combination, since I mainly bow hunt, to, to get it ready to shoot and get the broadhead in, to be able to draw clearly with nothing around me. It's, it's constant analyzing. When you're practicing shooting at targets before you got into the field, um, you want to make sure that you get really good at going through all the necessary things that you need to have for a good shot. If they become instinctive to you while shooting at a target, then when you're out in the field and you have an animal in front of you, then it should just happen instantly. Um, making sure that your knock is where it's supposed to be, that your fletchings are turned the right way, that your release is right, that your anchor point is the same and that you're drawing the same, that your grip is right. Everything has to fall into place in that one instant and the only way to get it to happen is to keep practicing. I've even gone so far as to run a couple of laps around the house to get my heart rate up and then go and try and shoot because when you're in that moment, your adrenaline is going so fast that everything changes and you forget little things. So practicing every day that you can is probably the best way to prepare yourself for going out on a hunt and, and getting a good kill. Whenever I'm in a stand, I become aware that I hear way better than I ever imagined. I smell way better than I imagined. It's incredible. You go from hearing the slightest cracking of a twig or a leaf or the slightest sensation that there's something around you. You can actually feel it when you're out there. I mean, you're so close to it all happening. You're, you're just overrun with all these senses that make you analyze, analyze, analyze what's next, what's coming, that sort of thing. Hunting is more about being outside than harvesting the animal. There's so much that people don't realize that goes on when you're out in the wilderness. Close encounters that you have with animals, watching the sunrise and the sunset, it just means being able to be out there away from the chaos of the city and the clutter and the cell phones and all the technology and just getting away from all that and being at peace that you can breathe when you're out there hunting. I hitch a ride going downhill. I should have hitched the ride going up the hill. Didn't really think that one through. What's the deal with this quiver? I don't like it. I need a new one. Everything. We're hitchhiking back to the cabin because decided not to go stalking animals because it might ruin the hunt for later, which is a great idea. They're out looking for a pig. Someone shot this morning and they haven't found it yet. Found the arrow though. It always stinks when you don't find them, but it happens sometimes. It's part of bow hunting. Man, my fingers are chewed up by cactuses. It was nice running to Brandon and Zane because I would have burned up out there. My feet are starting to hurt from walking around so much in my stinky snake boots. I really need to go inside and take a shower. I'm getting kind of itchy. I think I might have um, ants in my pants. Pigs are dirty, pigs are nasty, pigs poop in their own water holes, pigs are stinky, pigs are evil, pigs are mean. Where do they come from? That's been discussed, debated, talked about. I know a lot of them around here, like here at Hogland, you'll see mixed colors, white, striped, every kind of pig you can think of. There's people that actually, years ago, Things would happen and they couldn't afford it or they didn't want to feed them anymore and they just turn pins of pigs loose that they raised for food. 
for harvesting for whatever. And so these pigs eventually just go, 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 multiply, multiply, multiply. I know we've seen a sow one time with 19 babies. I mean, it's just the older they are, the more babies they have, the more, they, there's a saying that every pig you kill is in essence 100 more pigs that you just killed or stopped in the population. There's just such an abundance of food for them, but they are destroying so much. They're destroying the fields, the habitat, fences. They are eating animals. They will eat deer fawns. I know our deer population has suffered. Pigs are so evil and condescending that you can actually shoot one pig. And at times, if they smell the blood and there's a group of them, they will jump that injured pig right there and demolish it. I mean, they will rip its ears off, rip its snout off, rip it, just rip it apart and eat it. They are just, it does not matter to them that it's their own kind. I hadn't seen much that morning, so um, I figured maybe that some of the animals had started a pre-rut and started chasing doe. So I pulled out my rattle bag and I started doing a little rattling and within maybe 20 seconds, a huge buck came in to see what was going on. He came in probably about 70 yards, so I didn't have a shot, but to see him respond so well to that and to come running in uh, is just an awesome feeling. He left and I continued to rattle a little bit more and shortly after I had another smaller buck come in and he hung around for a little bit longer but he was still pretty far away so I didn't have a shot. But just that experience of seeing animals come in that close and respond to something that you're doing um, is just something that you can't describe. I had a blast this weekend because I'm, it, it's fine hunting with men but um, it's a whole nother level when you have girlfriends to hunt with. And I haven't had a lot of um, experience hunting with women and um, until recently really, and it's a blast. I am still a mom, I am still a wife, I am still a woman, and I do like to be clean once in a while. I do like to smell better, I do like to look better, and I don't want people to give my husband a hard time and say, why in the heck did you marry that woman? So I have to clean up now and then for public functions. The deer don't care, but other people do, so. <laughs> the weather that day actually was one of the most perfect days that we had had on the entire hunt. The wind had finally calmed down. It wasn't too cold, and I knew that the animals would be moving midday, so I decided to go ahead and get in the stand about one o'clock and see if I couldn't have something come in. Uh, with the weather being the way it was, I knew that they would be moving and it was just going to take some patience to get them in close enough to get a shot. It had only been about 30 minutes and as I was sitting there just trying to be quiet and looking around to see if there was any movement, there was a doe that came in. As she was eating the corn, she slowly started walking within my field of vision so I could get a shot on her. And I let her put her head down and keep eating, let her get comfortable. Uh, I picked up my bow and I drew back and as soon as I was bringing my green 20 yard pin down onto her shoulder, something made a noise off in the woods that alerted her and she turned around and ran. And my heart sank because I didn't know if she was gonna come back or what, what she was gonna do. I was after a pig. We were walking along the road to go back and check the water hole and right up over the edge, I saw something catch my eye and I looked and. It was a smaller black hog, so I thought maybe I could get close enough, but I lost him. It's always fun to try. <laughs> maybe now we can find his daddy somewhere. That's pig crap. Ugh. Pig poop. <laughs> Golly, you can see where they bedded up. Rooted it all up, bedded up under the trees where the dirt's moist and damp and they look for acorns, grubs, any kind of food. Under like every tree around here. That's crazy. You can see the holes where they go through and they hit the hole. God. There's like You can see up under all the brush in the hottest part of the day, all those holes are where they constantly 
go in and it just rounds out a big circle and they go in there and get in the cool damp dirt and waller and cool themselves off quite a bit since they can't sweat they have to cool off that way by packing mud on them so this this is really good sign though I mean there's holes here holes over there all around here so we can we can round the edge over there and look and see if we see some more fresh big poop that's a great sign that they may be over there at the tank I mean it is <laughs> that's awesome straight through the trail you can see where he rooted a while ago. Women, we can like get dressed up and go like, go get camo shorts if it's hot. And I don't know, I like to play dress up. I mean, forever gonna be a little girl who likes to play dress up. No better way to play dress up than dress up like a bush and sit outside and try and shoot something. I had a few other deer come behind me that never came in close enough for a shot. Uh, so I spent a little bit of time watching them and just, you know, enjoying being there. That doe actually made her way back with another deer and she came in, she was a little bit more alert and a little bit more nervous. So I knew it was gonna take everything I had to get this shot. Um, as she finally took a couple of steps into my range, I used every last bit of energy that I had to draw that bow back again and waited for her front leg to just move a little bit forward. And when I shot, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, the arrow just completely passed through her, but I knew I made a good shot and I knew that I was gonna hopefully get out and, and find this doe. I'm still shaking, so like. <laughs> I think I got a good pass through on her, so um, catch my breath and uh, go find my doe. I was already excited because it was the first time I had ever gotten a pass through on, on an animal. So knowing that my arrow had gone all the way through just upped the anticipation so much more. And when I walked up on her just no more than 50 yards from where I had shot her, I was completely beside myself. It, it's a feeling that you can't describe because everything that you have worked for and all the prep work, when it all finally comes together and then you can actually get down and go and harvest that animal, it's indescribable. And that's where my dance comes in because I don't know what to say at that time. And sometimes tears too, because I'm just shaking so bad I can't control anything. The following hunt that you're about to see was conducted with professional guides. Because of the dangers involved, we do not recommend that you try these hunts on your own. on the hunt, through the hunt, after the hunt, everything is just so revved up. My heart was beating out of my chest. You know, when you have the anticipation and then it actually coming through and seeing the hog and making a shot. And I mean, it's almost sounds too good to be true, but it's happening time and time again. And it's just, it's overwhelming. I mean, I was physically exhausted just from the excitement. The second the arrow leaves, everyone's on the hog. Everyone's watching the hog. You're watching the hog, you're like, Oh, please, please just let me know. You know, and you hear the thump after the arrow leaves and everything just feels like it came together. It's in play. And then he screams, he runs. You're running to watch where the hog goes. Your heart's thumping. You're tripping over cactus. You're tripping over brush. You're tripping over rocks. I mean, it, and to get people in there doing this with these wild, huge, crazy animals with these big old tusks is just overwhelmingly exciting. That is just a feeling like you have really accomplished something that is not 
Yet that is not an everyday thing that you get to experience. It's not the same as sitting there at that feeder waiting for that hog or catching him on a trail or this is at night with a crazy wild animal. So I, I have never felt anything like that before ever. <laughs> Here we go again. I'm a girl. People are going to say, oh yeah, right. She's going to go stick a pig, you know, or something like that in the night with a red light. Yeah, let's see it happen. And when I saw it hit or when I hear it hit and watch my light did not go down the road or I'm just like, oh my God, I did it. You know, I mean, it's, it's just like, uh, just a huge, huge accomplishment, like a milestone when you've hunted so long and it's something new and something harder. So it, it's just a different goal. I still have a lot to learn. And every time we go out into the field, I learn something new. I see something I've never seen before. And I want people to see that I am willing to learn, but I also want them to know that I want to help other women get involved as well. When my son grows up, I guess I would hope the number one thing he says about his mom is that I taught him what means the world to me, and that is promoting the outdoors in the most positive way possible and showing him and everybody else the importance of it. I, I get excited whenever someone kills, because a lot of times I hunt with other people and I'm not actually the person who, um, is taking the trophy or the animal, I'll, I'll go with other people because I get the same kind of satisfaction watching someone else hunt as um, me doing it myself. I want to find that little girl that, you know, is looking around thinking that she can't do this and have her see me doing it and think, you know what, I can do that too. That is something that I can do. doesn't matter if my brother can't do it, you know, I'm going to go out there and do it whether I'm a girl or not.